Can we use food as medicine for our brain and improve the way we think, feel, and behave by choosing what we put and don't put on our plate? In this interview, Harvard psychiatrist and professor Dr. Chris Palmer will address this question and describe how we can use specific types of diets based on some degree of carbohydrate restriction from fasting to ketogenic diet to simple elimination of processed food to improve mental health and cognitive function. What what ends up being shocking and surprising to most people, even clinicians, is that these connections actually go back two centuries. In the 1800s, it was well established that families in which diabetes runs had high rates of mental illness, in particular, serious mental illness, um, and vice versa. If you had a family with a lot of mental illness, fa- uh, people were more likely to develop type 2 diabetes. This is before any medications were being used. We hadn't even discovered insulin yet. We weren't using antipsychotics. So these were not side effects of medications. These connections are fundamental to understanding the pathophysiology of serious mental illness and diabetes and how they go together. Um, In the 1940s, the field began developing all sorts of research studies documenting metabolic abnormalities in the bodies of people with serious mental illness, such as schizophrenia and bipolar disorder, including things like insulin resistance, uh, increased levels of lactate, which is a sign of metabolic stress. Um, You know, advancing in the 1980s, we had the first hypothesis of the mitochondrial theory of autism spectrum disorder. Um, By the 1990s, we were developing all these functional imaging studies, functional MRI, PET scans, spec scans, bold scans, all of these different scans. What are those scans measuring? They are all measuring brain metabolism. That's what they're measuring. Metabolic differences in the brains of people with mental and neurological disorders. Um, By the year 2000, we had a metabolic theory of bipolar disorder. Within four years, we also had um, metabolic or mitochondrial theories of schizophrenia, chronic depression. And over the last 20 years, there has been an explosion of research looking at the connections between metabolism, metabolic abnormalities, and serious brain disorders, in which I include both mental health disorders and neurological disorders, some neurological disorders. Thank you very much, Chris, for sharing all this knowledge and your uh, inspiring story. We'll make sure to uh, share the links to your book and uh, to your website with the, a ton of, of resources on the topic in the video description. Thank you very much. Hey. Would you like to know how food can be medicine for your genes? Get access to my free webinar using the link in the video description. You will find out how your genes can learn from your lifestyle choices and how you can teach them to unlock their full potential. I hope you enjoyed the webinar. And if you do, please make sure to comment and share.